Good morning. good morning. What a joy it is. I say good morning to those that will be watching online as well. Uh, it is a joy for us to be gathered here this morning. And I said to myself last night, self, I shouldn't come in and gloat too much this morning. <laughs> but I just can't help but share how happy I am that God does answer prayers and miracles do happen. And the San Diego Padres can beat the, uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers, so we give thanks. Okay, I'm sorry, Karen, but you know, like I said, you have to admit miracles happen, and it even rained. So, um, and unfortunately, uh, talking with Thelma and and her her son, uh, they were stuck at Phoenix Airport uh, for eight hours. Did you say because of the rain that moved through San Diego? So. Uh, as I, I said to them, not trying to have too much of a pun, but it was a perfect storm as far as them being stuck and, and the rain coming in. When will that ever happen, happen again? So it is a joy for us to be gathered here the, this morning and to share with you and to be with you. I welcome you, whether this is your first time or you're returning after being uh, away for some time. It is good for us to be gathered as God's family. I welcome you. If you've not already done so, if you can take the attendance pad, they're usually at the seat at the center of each row, uh, at the center uh, seat, and then pass down and back around so you might see who's worshiping with you in your row. Uh, and I want to, in just a moment, invite you that you'll stand, you'll turn, you'll greet each other somehow, a wave, a smile, uh, an acknowledgement of, of our friendship together as as brothers and sisters in Christ, and then we'll remain standing for our opening song, Shout to the Lord. So let us stand, let us greet one another in the name of Christ. Shouts to the Lord. My 
Please join me in the call to worship. We come joyfully to the house of the Lord. We bring our praise and offer our lives to God. This is our gift and our sacrifice, an act of devotion to God. Let us celebrate God's love with our voices and our lives. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you to turn your attention to the announcements that will be uh, on the screen and, and to also make sure you check out the, the calendar of things that might be happening and that you want to uh, be a part of in, in the coming week and in the days uh, ahead. I want to share with you first up uh, this Thursday uh, for the women of the, of the church that the United uh, Women uh, in Faith will be meeting, uh, formerly known as the United Methodist Women, and they will be meeting uh, I'm going to interrupt my announcement here. I want to invite any other children. Did Tiffany want to wait just a second? Any other children that want to go with Miss Tiffany and uh, for Sunday school? That's my, my mistake for not jumping on this sooner. If there's any others that want to go? Okay, you're off. Wonderful. Uh, but the United Women in Faith are meeting on Thursday on the, this, uh, the 20th at 1030 in room one. So you'll go in the doors that are just next to the breezeway and then turn right. And it is the first room on your left-hand side. Uh, they gather. They have wonderful, uh, uh, uplifting programs. And uh, also, uh, they'll begin to share about some of the activities that they will be doing towards the end of this year and beginning into next year. So we look forward uh, to you joining them on Thursday. If you need any other information, you can see Marlene. Uh, I want to invite you, you. There is a flyer that's in your, I believe it's in your bulletin. 
uh, or it's at least part of the bulletin, the trunk or treat that is happening uh, on Halloween from 5 to 7. Uh, use this that's in, in the bulletin as an invitation and to share that uh, with friends and families. And there is a sign up if you can help out, whether your car, uh, if you don't know what trunk or treat is, you uh, bring your car, uh, you open your trunk, you decorate it. And I always share that my trunk's always the scariest year round, so I don't have to do much uh, when I open it up. But, and then you bring a treat, uh, children will come and they'll go around and and it's a safe way of being able to uh, have uh, trick or treat, but only it's trunk or treat. Uh, so it's from five to seven. There is a sign up uh, on the table in the breezeway. You'll see a nice flyer there that will invite you uh, to sign up and help out. Also, you can bring candy in case there's somebody that has a, a trunk but forgot their treats. So uh, we can help them out as, as well. So you can see that. And you saw Tiffany as she was walking out. You can ask how you might be able to help her out uh, with this wonderful event. So invite the children in your neighborhood, your friends, and they'll still have time to go back and trick or treat in their neighborhoods as, as well. Uh, this is, you, you, you think the stores are getting early. We are jumping ahead of that because I want to make sure that uh, we, you save the date for the Christmas party. We, we were able to come back in person last year, and uh, we want to make this a great event for you. Uh, it is the, the second Saturday. Normally, we've had it on the first Saturday, but this year we are uh, doing on the second Saturday of December. Uh, so we want to invite you to come, 530 to 8. There'll be more information as the weeks go on and how you can participate and how you can uh, uh, kind of reserve your spot for that and invite others to join you. It's a great time. We have games. We sing. Uh, there's going to be great food. Uh, so uh, it's a great way to enjoy time together as a church family and also the, the Christmas spirit. So we invite you to save that date. And then finally, just to remind you that on the uh, welcome table as you came in, there is a sign up for liturgists and greeters. Um, and then if there isn't a place for ushers, if you want to usher, you can see myself or one of the gentlemen that usher, and they can pass that on. Um, we uh, invite you. You've never done a liturgist or a greeter before, but you said, you know, I'd like to be a part of that. Uh, just mark that it's the first time. I will be a, uh, help you out, and others will help you out and to train you and to get you ready to be able to serve in that way. So there's sign up for um, next month, uh, November, that is on the table. So we invite you to think about that and pray about that as well. I want to invite this week our sharing of faith, uh, which this has been just a blessing for me to invite persons that have signed up to share uh, a part of their faith uh, with us as a church family. Barbara Gaborko, who uh, has been part of a group that I went to the Holy Land with, and we uh, had a great uh, friendship that uh, budded during that time. So I invite Barbara to come forward. I was raised in the Methodist Church from the minute I was born. My grandfather was a Methodist minister, and he baptized me at 10 days old. I had a great-grandfather who was a Methodist minister. And all my life I was surrounded with, you know, Sunday school and MYF and everything. But when that is just how everything is, you don't pay close attention. And I didn't. So... I found everything was just okay. I accepted everything. But did I believe that God saw me as an individual? Probably not. And then 21 years ago, that changed. It was Easter time. And my son and his young family were slated to come down and visit me. And my mother was still alive at that time. And I was really looking forward to, to the visit. But I received a call from my son. And he said, Mom, 
We're canceling. We're not coming. What? You know, mom was not pleased. He said, I have this feeling. Well, let me back up. Our neighborhood is going to have a Easter egg hunt. And they want to have it in my backyard. And so that's what we're doing. Wait a minute. You're going to have an Easter egg hunt rather than come down and visit your family? Didn't go over very well. And and then he said words that I can still hear in my ears today. Mom, I have this feeling This is something I am supposed to do. He said that several times. Okay. He had the Easter egg hunt in their backyard. But here's what happened. One of his neighbors had a sister who was visiting. And she came to the Easter egg hunt. And she was so impressed with all the neighborly whatever that was going on. And she was particularly impressed with my son and his wife and the two children. And after she left the Easter egg hunt, she told her sister, this is what I want for my unborn baby. She was pregnant. She was not married, and she was not in a position to keep the baby. You can sort of see where this is going. After much, she had, oh, and she had already tried to have somebody adopt the baby right after it was born, but that had fallen through. After some carrying on and stuff through the adoption agency and everything, It was decided that Jeff and Char would be the foster parents when the baby was born, which is exactly what happened. And some of you know my son is a doctor, and he was actually involved in the delivery of this baby. So Jonathan came home to their house straight from the hospital. And, of course, ultimately, they adopted Jonathan Jonathan just had his 21st birthday and has been an integral part of our family. But here's the thing. What if Jeff had not listened to that voice that said, this is something you are supposed to do? Our whole extended family has paid attention to that, and we call it the God thing. God was talking to him. And he did what he was supposed to do. And we benefited because we have Jonathan, which is very important. It made me stop and think about paying attention to those little signs that you often don't pay attention to. At least I hadn't been. So I try to do that now. And then later on it occurred to me, that if Jeff had come on down, if they'd come down and we'd had our family thing and everybody would have been happy and we would have had no idea that we had missed out on something. So, my thing is, please pay attention. You never know because God works in mysterious ways. Thank you, Barbara. We've, had a, we've been blessed by hearing these faith sharings, and, and we still have opportunities, and, and that's an opportunity that you, if you've been moved or want to share your faith story, uh, we have a sign-up as well for that on the welcome table that you can sign up and share. If you're not sure, talk to myself, talk to Marlene uh, about that, and, and uh, we would be glad to give you some more uh, insight and information. 
As we come to our, our time of prayer, this morning we are blessing a quilt, a, a friend of, uh, of um, Kim Arona. Uh, her name is Tracy, and I'm not going to try the last name at all, uh, Tracy A. Uh, but Kim uh, sent me a text, and this will be a part of our prayers as well, that uh, Leslie Hamilton, who she cares for, wasn't feeling well this morning. So, but she wanted me to know that this, this friend, Tracy, uh, that her mother had just died, and Kim and Tracy have been friends since they were five years old. So lifelong friends. Um, and uh, the impact that the death of her mother has had on her. So we lift up prayers and offer this quilt for God's blessing uh, for Tracy. Let us pray. Gracious and most caring, compassionate God. We are so thankful that in our times of grief that your spirit surrounds us, fills us, and holds us. We thank you that your spirit is with Tracy and the family and the loss of her mother. We pray in this time of grief that they will be comforted by your spirit. They will be strengthened. And they will know the joy of the life that was well lived. We thank you for your blessing upon this gift, this outreach from this church family, that as Tracy receives it, she will know how much that she is loved by you and that we, this church family, reaches out in that spirit of love. We give you thanks, O oh God, in this blessing of this gift and of all who have brought it forth and those that will receive it. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. You can tie a prayer knot following the service. It'll be outside underneath the tower, and you can go out tie a prayer knot, and, and say a prayer for Tracy and the family. This is our candle of shalom, a candle of peace, a peace that is beyond our understanding, a peace of wholeness and reconciliation, a peace for the world. We pray for we began saying prayers and we continue to say prayers for uh, the people of Ukraine and for peace to come to that part of the world. But it has expanded. And as we say this prayer and as we sing at the end of the service, let there be peace on earth. We pray for all corners of the world where there is violence and where there is hatred, that peace will come. God's peace will come. We continue to light the candle for those that are battling COVID and struggling with, with that and those that continue to be in the forefront of care for people with COVID. So we continue to light this candle and continue to give God thanks when we see numbers that continue to decrease and uh, opportunities for healing continue to increase. And as I said just a moment ago, prayers for Leslie on this day in which she is not doing well, uh, and we just lift up prayers for her healing. I'll begin over here and begin to share and ask for prayers. I'm going to pick up my pen here. And what prayers there might be. I want to start with Barry. Prayers for Lucy Kelly, um, a former member uh, and always a member. Uh, you can't get rid of us that easy. Uh, we are always members. So prayers for Lucy, her cancer returned. So we lift up prayers. Dan. Yes, continue prayers for Mark Bauer. Um, I saw him and did you see him also? Dan? Yeah, so we both saw him this week and, and uh, he injured his knee in a bike accident and uh, still not clear, but uh, on what they're going to do in proceeding in healing, but uh, he's more immobilized <laughs> uh, than he has been. So prayers for Mark in healing. Thank you. Other prayers over here? Marlene. I'd like to pray for Gilbert. He's been coughing ever since he had COVID in the morning, and it turns out he's scarred since he was born in the morning. They say he's been coughing ever since he's born. And I think it's the inside of his 
So prayers for, for Gilbert, uh, who is still struggling with the after effects of, of COVID and, and uh, for all those that continue to battle with the effects of, of COVID uh, long term. Prayers on here, Karen. Okay, so we she has taken her to the ER. So prayers uh, for again for Leslie in this time. Thank you, Karen. Over here, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to to prayers for your mom, and I'll, I'm gonna come back to that. I want to, at this time, also during prayers, I'm going to light this candle. This is a, a prayer for Thelma Loud. And uh, uh, Thelma, this is a, a time of mixed uh, emotions and feelings. Uh, Thelma uh, is going to be moving. Uh, some of you may have heard that that was in the works and moving to to. Tennessee is right. I had to make sure I got the right state. Uh, moving to to Tennessee uh, to be near her son, who is with her uh, this morning. Uh, she'll be leaving on Friday. Uh, as we know, Thelma and Oscar have been part of this church family for so long. Uh, the wonderful Christmas and Easter uh, banners that we put up, Thelma uh, made those banners for for us, and the welcome table she made that beautiful covering for us as well and their other evidence of their their uh, uh, time with us and as I said Thelma will always be a part of our family and uh, we will continue to raise prayers for you and hopefully through texts and emails we'll still be in communication so we're going to say a prayer just uh, shortly or just for Thelma specifically and uh, uh, but I want to make sure that you see Thelma uh, so don't just run off right away after the service. I know you're tired from being uh, um, uh, being the layover in Phoenix and all, but we want to make sure people have a chance to see you and all that. Um, did you want to, and I can kind of share any other words, did you want to share anything, Thelma? Come on up here. Okay. <laughs> so God bless you and take you and stay keep with you sharing the same strength of my soul you've been a blessing to me and God took you from my life to lead you in the right direction and so I just thank you all the same That's right. That's right, Thelma. So as we begin prayer, uh, we will lift up Thelma, uh, and then I'll move into uh, the rest of our, our prayer this morning for this morning. So let us uh, invite God to, to continue to make God's self known to us in this space as we lift up our prayers and as we share our prayers of blessings and, and goodwill for Thelma. Let us pray. Oh God, as we have, have learned in our faith and in our travels, and as we have read in the scriptures that you have called your people and they have traveled and they have been on a journey. And so this morning we 
lift up Thelma Lau to you, one of your faithful, one of your children, as she now travels on. She has been in ministry here in her way, O oh God, as you have called her, through her creative spirit and abilities. And now, O oh God, you have made a place for her with Thelma's son in Tennessee and with that whole family. We ask that you bless Thelma. We ask that you watch over her and keep her that in her time there, that she will flourish and those that come to know her will be as blessed as we have been. And know that her faith will continue to spread. And loving God, that that faith was nourished as well here in Temecula as part of this church family. She is added to this church family she has been given to by this church family. And we are always one because we are all family through you, because you are our creator. And through your son, Jesus Christ, who is our brother. So watch over, Thelma, loving God. And may the ties always be bound and strong. And these same ties, O oh loving God, as we move into the Spirit, connect us all as we come this morning to be in prayer, to praise you, O oh loving God, and to give thanks, to be blessed in this time, to share our joys and, and excitement and faith, and to also lift up, O oh loving God, our struggles and our pain. Places in the world, oh God, that, that are hurting. We pray for you and to be present with them and for you to call upon your servants. For those that are rebuilding their lives after, after disasters of hurricanes and fires and, and so many more around the world. For those that are suffering because of violence due to war or the actions of an individual. We pray for healing, oh God. We pray for rebuilding. We pray for justice. We pray, loving God, for those that are struggling with health, those that are battling diseases, cancer and COVID and so many others. We thank you for the doctors and the nurses that are present. We especially pray for those that are tending to Leslie and, and others at this moment. We pray for healing and strength. We pray for understanding as to why this is happening to loved ones and friends. We give you thanks for the joys of our lives. Even in the saying of goodbye to Thelma, the joy that, that she has brought and offered to many of us. A joy that will live on in our lives. We give you thanks for the joys of children and, and for the celebrations of birthdays and, and anniversaries. We lift up those persons that we share this week. We thank you, O oh God, that even in the midst of times that seem tough, that you provide and offer and give. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Hear our prayers of faith our prayers of love for you and for one another. Hear our prayers for hope and peace. Hear our prayers of forgiveness. Hear our prayers, O oh God, and help us to understand your answers.
These are our gifts. These are our petitions. This is a part of our faith and love for you. As we pray in the name that we call Lord and Savior, your son Jesus. The prayer that he taught his disciples and has been taught for generations and centuries by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture this morning is from Luke 18, the first eight verses. And as we said before, Luke is written in the most elegant Greek of all of the New Testament. He was 
a Gentile writing somewhere near the end of the first century, somewhere in the Mediterranean. In the various translations of the book, the heading of this story is variously the persistent widow or the nagging widow. So I'd just like to note that nagging is approved in the Bible. <laughs> Jesus told them a story showing that it was necessary for them to pray consistently and never quit. He said there was once a judge in some city who never gave God a thought and cared nothing for people. A widow in that city kept after him. My rights are being violated. Protect me. He never gave her the time of day. But after this went on and on and on, he said to himself, I care nothing what God thinks, even less what people think. But because this widow won't quit badgering me, I better do something and see that she gets justice. Otherwise, I'm going to end up being beaten black and blue by her pounding. Then the master said, do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is, is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people who continue to cry out for help? Won't he stick up for them? I assure you, he will. He will not drag his feet. But how much of that kind of persistent faith will the Son of Man find on earth when he returns? May the Lord bless this reading from the Message Translation. Some people feel that it's taboo to talk about faith. They insist that faith is personal. Maybe because they're afraid if they share their faith, people in this day and age at least, maybe in our society and culture, will look down upon them. It's a private and it should be left that way is their feeling. Perhaps the reasoning also in part because so many Discussions discerning concerning faith become arguments and, and it gets nowhere and nothing is settled and no one is no one is persuaded one way or another. You've heard the old adage at holiday dinners that you don't talk about politics or religion. Often such ar arguments resolve around how we define certain religious issues, such as the teachings and the practices one faith group has as opposed to another, such as which denomination or non-denomination is correct, such as how literally we should take various parts of the scripture, such as how we define God's grace, such as what is required to be forgiven, such as whose version of the prayer is correct and the right one, such as who should be forgiven and who should not such as who is going to heaven and who is not. If we attempted to put together a list of religious matters about which uh, people disagree, the, the list would be embarrassingly long. Embarrassingly because such disagreements often have little or nothing to do with what Jesus emphasized or, or even talked about. In fact, he might be, be very shaken and shake his head were we to have each argument in his presence. That's because these disagreements often lead us in the wrong questions and thus to the wrong answers. When Jesus spoke of faith, it was never about doctrine or dogmas or the proper forms of worship. For him, faith was and is primarily the trust we put in God's love for us and how willingly we are to serve others. It is determined by how convinced we are that God will take care of us, forgive us, heal and protect us from evil. Faith is characterized by trust and we see in the gospel reading today even by persistence. Faith trusts that no matter what, God can bring about wholeness. 
Real faith does not give up on the things do not go our way or when prayers are not answered. In the parable that we just heard of the widow and the unjust judge, Jesus gives an example of persistence, telling right up front that the parable about the disciples and and our need to pray always and not to lose heart. We may view this woman as a a nag, as as Marlene alluded to in, in the title of this scripture. This woman that just would not quit. But under the circumstances, a cold-hearted judge who cared neither for, for God or, or for the well-being of, of, of his fellow citizens, she had little choice because widows in, in that time and, and in that place had very few people to turn to. And it really was the, the job of the judge to care for those that, that had no other voice for them, to make sure justice was done for them. But this particular judge was more worried about what was best for him, about how he could stay in power. He was self righteous, he was self absorbed. In his perspective, there was no benefit to hearing the widow's case because nothing would come of it for his betterment. So he tried hear the word tried, to ignore her. Thus, persistence was the only weapon that this widow had. Leslie Weatherhead, a British preacher of the the last century in about the 1940s and 50s, gives us this picture of this widow and the judge. He writes, the judge boasts that he cares for neither God nor humanity. But when he leaves his home, the widow is 10 paces behind him calling out to him and asking him to take notice of her. When he goes into the court, she presses her way to the back of the room and continues to keep interrupting him, asking for justice. When he comes home for dinner, she goes and and through the window shouts out to him. When he goes for an evening stroll, she rises up from, from nowhere and shouts at him. One imagines that the judge's friends begin to taunt him about her. When are you going to listen to the woman? They laugh together as they watch him saying, there goes the judge with his lady friend right behind him. In his reflection of this passage, Weatherhead hints at a view of the scripture that that some biblical commentators believe that the judge was afraid of, of the widow. Maybe not physically, but at a minimum, that his reputation as a judge was threatened. His position of power could be weakened if he didn't do something about her. So the judge finally listens to her petition, and it pays off in the end. Now we must be clear, although Jesus' subject is persistent prayer, he's not suggesting that the God is like the unjust judge. The judge is not a stand-in for God in this parable. In some parables we can make that correlation, but not here. Rather, the point is that even if the self-centered judge was finally willing to answer the widow's request, just think how much more willing is a loving God to respond to our prayer, especially this persistent prayer for justice. Jesus is not likening God to an unjust judge. Rather, he uses the judge to make a point about how much greater is God's love. Most of us have met persons in our lives, though not perfect, have treated us well. We have friends and we have family who respond to our needs despite whatever faults that they may have. We too, though not perfect, love others and treat them well despite our imperfections. So just imagine the love and the caring that God, the perfect one, the ultimate lover, has for each and every one of us. 
in the parable, Jesus is, is nudging us to emulate this widow in her persistent faith. He's holding her up as a model for our prayer. She would not have persisted in her request for justice if she had no faith. And she felt like her needs could not be met. This is the confidence that the faith and the persistence that we are to bring to our prayers. We are being told to pray with the kind of of faith that counts, that brings about justice. We never hear Jesus praise those who tenaciously argued one religious view or another. We never hear him praise those insistent on a certain interpretation of the law or the correct formulas or the proper place to worship. But repeatedly we hear him praise those who trusted that God hears their prayers, who trusted in God in their dire circumstances. But trust, if it is to have life, must be persistent. In our Sunday worship services, we almost every week pray for prayer and for pray for peace. But obviously, peace has not come over the world, at least not the way we imagine and hope and ask for. Our world remains addicted to violence and hatred. So do we give up on prayer in this regard? Do we doubt the power of prayer? Or like the widowed woman, do we keep at it? We keep praying every week for shalom, for peace. God often uses the very people who pray for help to bring about the answers we seek. This woman came to the judge seeking justice for herself, but she serves as a model for all who work for justice for others as well. If we were to look around, we can see the unequal distribution of the world's resources. It's it's obvious that not only many women, many children, and many men are without justice. We know that there are places in the world where people are without justice, where there is violence, where there is oppression. And sometimes we don't have to look very far to see that. And how persistent are we praying for that to change? And while we're at it, what do we do by way of discussion and action to give teeth to the words of our prayers that injustice will be overcome wherever it exists? By persistence, persistence, persistence. Belief must include trust. It must include persistence whether the sun is shining or raining on our parade. So do we trust God enough to to give God the wheel of our life or do we insist on maintaining control because we think we're the better drivers? Do we even give God credit for the good things that happen in our lives? There's a woman who was going out to the mall. It was a busy time. It might have been a holiday season. And there were very few parking places uh, to, to find. And as she was going up and down every aisle, finding that parking place, she had a prayer to God. God, I will fast for the month and give $50 a week to those that are in need if you help me find a parking place. Within moments after saying that prayer, a person pulled out and she zipped right in, only yards away from the the opening, the entrance to the mall. And she quickly told God, never mind, since she had found the place herself. (laughs) The woman in this gospel story could have given up. She could have gone home without the justice that she sought. She could have become maybe a beggar, a person out on the street because she had given up. Without putting herself through the ordeal of following the judge everywhere. But she didn't do that. 
This was the faith that Jesus praised. We have the same choice. We can come to God seeking what's needed for our world, for our, our church and congregation, our family, our friends, ourselves, and yes, friends, even our enemies. But beyond coming to God, we need to follow the example of the widow. We need to stay with it. We need to pray with persistence, persistence from the depth of our hearts, convinced that, that God indeed will give to us as we need. It's not about if something tragic happens in our lives, we haven't been persistent in our prayer. It's about in our faith and trusting God that God is present with us, that we continue to pray, that we continue to seek the justice and the hope and know confidently of the love of God. It has been said by numerous spiritual writers that prayer is not meant to change God. It is meant to change the one who is praying. That too takes persistent prayer and faith that God will open our hearts to understand the difference between just seeking the things that we want and the things that God knows we need. May we continue to be persistent in seeking justice, not only for ourselves, but for all. And have faith and trust in the love of God. Let us pray. Yes, God, we do believe. We do trust that you love us enough that you will provide for us. We trust in your power to heal us from all the hold that holds us back from being at one with you. Teach us the persistence of the widow. Show us what we need and help us to realize that you truly know what is best for us. For this we continue to pray. Amen. As we come into our response to God's word for us, to the praise that we have offered to God and God has given to us, I share with you the opportunity to give. To give to your church family, to this congregation, to the church, that we continue to offer the ministries and the hope and to be persistent in this community as well as our offering to, to our missionary and to help support our missionary, uh, Reverend Andrew Soon Lee, who is a missionary at a woman's school in Cambodia. We give because God has given so much to us, and this is our expression of love to God. I invite the ushers to come forward and, as we share our gifts.
Loving God, we receive these gifts. We receive them to be used to offer the love and the hope and the help in this community and in your world, that the lives of those that are hurting may be touched, that the faith that is, that is being lived will be shared throughout this community and the world. Oh God, we give you thanks for these gifts. Amen. I share with you our closing hymn. The, the number is three, if you're going to look in the hymnal, it's 384, not uh, 184, I believe it's listed, or they're on the screen. Love divine, all loves excelling. now and may the, the God of creation, the God of love, the God of hope, and may the Son, Jesus Christ, who walks with us, before us, behind us, and may the Holy Spirit that will lift you in joy and peace go with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.